Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you're watching this on Facebook or wherever in the world, I want to thank you for joining us. It is Tuesday. We are at episode 93 of the Note Closer Show. Uh, just excited, jacked up this morning. Um, we've got, just went over, especially for Note Camp 3.0, we went over the 700 attendee mark uh, this morning. So, woo! 700 people signed up for the event. That's up uh, over 250 people from last time we did it. So really excited about that. Um, we've got some really cool stuff uh, ready to roll out with that. I'm, I'm very, very excited about it. Um, I'm bouncing around, acting like a crazy person a little bit. I'm not getting much sleep at night because we've got some great things that we're rolling out for the first time here at Note Camp 3.0. It kicks off this Thursday at noon. You can still grab tickets to Note Camp dot live if you want to get signed up you can still grab tickets there uh just a uh, just great thing love all the speakers love all the people starting to share we do have the survey if you're signed up there don't let's not post the survey link there because i don't want oh, people no, to I'm talking, I'm doing yeah it um but so we're really excited about them tonight everybody at seven o'clock tonight we've got uh 16 assets from one of our hedge funds and so joel markovitz and i will jump on at seven o'clock tonight and break down these 16 assets with already reserve pricing built in. So you can already figure in your exit strategies. Um, Joel and uh, Daniel, Daniel Singer Law Group have been handling the servicing and special servicing and bar route reaching and stuff. So you'll be able to get first hand knowledge direct from the source today, or tonight I should say, on these 16 assets. So uh, it'll be first come, first serve pricing on it. If you can hit the reserve price, it's yours and uh, get you closing stuff out there as well. So look for the note draft post i've already posted something on facebook earlier down below there on my profile where you can get registered for tonight's call at seven o'clock central <sighs> but today's topic is not all kissy kissy it is not valentine's uh it's talking about the kiss method and what kiss stands for a variety of annotations keep it simple silly keep it simple Stupid, <laughs> keep it simple, Scott. I've used it, keep it simple, Steffi. All right, <laughs> with Stephanie here before, but the method is keep it simple, silly. All right, and Jen had a good thing. We had our note draft for the mastermind on last Thursday, and we're getting you know agreements in, and literally people are flipping out, especially new people. Oh my god, I don't have a servicer yet. Well, it's okay. Jump on the phone, jump on a website, and get a servicer set up. It doesn't take you 12 days to do that. Actually, you can fill out information now and reach out to them and get it set up after you turn the paperwork in. It's not difficult. You have to keep it simple in this business, everybody. Kiss, literally. Take a deep breath. When you find yourself running around like a crazy person, it's usually best just to simply sit down, relax, take a deep breath, and then tackle it step by step or one thing at a time. And a lot of people struggle with that because it's in a new area. You don't know what's going on. What do I need to do next? All you gotta do most of the time is drop an email, pick up the phone, call somebody, will be your lifeline. Um, pick up the phone call, let us know, email us. We're here to help you guys get through things but we see this happen every time we do a, a draft, right? Mm -hmm. Every time we do a note funding league, um, people flip out. There's no reason to flip out. You have to realize you're dealing in the big leagues, all right? You're not in junior high. You're not in kindergarten. You're in the big leagues, ladies and gentlemen, all right? Yes, you may not have a vendor or two, but it doesn't take you a week to get your vendors filled out. Literally, you could fill out the form and then reach out and start contacting people to get things done ASAP for you, all right? So... One of the biggest things that we struggle with, I want to leave that up to you guys as far as letting us know what you're struggling with instead of what's coming out, unless you want to kick in, Jen, with what you see with people struggling or Nicole or Greg. I think the only thing, especially that I've noticed, is um, a lot of these people have, I want to say, taken a leap of faith where they, they got in their toes, but, but they touched that water and now they're uh, it, it was They finally did the leap, but it was too cold and, and they just need to 
Dive all the way in. Well, you know what? It, it's only it's not as cold if you just dive in. Yeah, that's a good point. You can't. The temperature. You do, yeah. Your body adjusts very quickly, right? You can't learn how to swim by just dipping your toe in the water. You've got to dive full in to learn it. And that's, I think that's one of the biggest things that most people don't realize. So that's a great, great point, great analogy, Jen. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and make an offer, but I'm going to run the other way when it comes back. Yeah. If it's not exactly, not the low, 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 low price, I'm going to run the other way. And we always see that people submit bids, but then they don't follow through their due diligence or they're not running their numbers. I got to give a big shout out to Jonathan Burton last night, who's out driving to Baton Rouge looking at yeah. properties in the mm-hmm. middle of the night that he's making offers on. So yeah. he's doing the work. Yeah. He couldn't get a realtor to drive by these assets, so he, hour and a half later, he's driving by the assets themselves. He's the one that flew over one of his assets too to make he sure. He did. That, yeah. <laughs> it was flooded in yeah. the uh, the flood that happened. And, in uh, Louisiana a few months ago. He's like, Scott, here's a picture from above. Here's an aerial view. The roof looks good. <laughs> but I can't tell if that's a water line or a paint line on the side of the house. Uh, <laughs> it's the waterfront property. It's waterfront and floating now. It's now a house to a house boat. <laughs> Does that make the value go down any? <laughs> so I think it's, we see that in every matter of the term. This is a really simple business of doing the same things over and over and over and over again once you've got your systems in place. And yes, I know. Ooh, that's a probably a better way to keep the KISS method. Keep it simple system. Or keep mm-hmm. keep it. Yeah, that'd be your, your that'd be KISS with a Y. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Keep your system simple. Um, just make a list. <laughs> um, oftentimes we've got a checklist that we provide through our workshops it's an advanced checklist that you can go through and check it. I would necessarily wouldn't use that 17 to 21 page checklist unless you're an engineer. Uh, and then by the time you get around to reading it, your deals will have be, been bought, sold, and three times or four times over for everything. But there's some simple things. Uh, we've got a one page upfront due diligence checklist that checks out. That's a really easy thing. Once you made an offer and an offer accepted, if it's accepted the right number and you're checking taxes, great. Don't flip out the little things. Like somebody contacted me yesterday. They said, oh, they, they sh- I looked at the collateral file and showed that they owed taxes in 2015. Okay. Did you go to the county website? Well, I called the county and they're closed. Well, let's go to the website. So I jumped on the website. I'm like, yeah, they owe taxes from 2015, 16, and 17. It says right there. It's 800 bucks, Not 1500 800 bucks, And the borrower's name matches up. So you're good to go. No reason to bother calling. You're good to go. So it's just, there's simple things out there. I know that not knowing is difficult sometimes. That's where we are, our not knowing causes us stress out. You know, if you've ever been a parent or had a boyfriend or girlfriend and your kids or your spouse isn't responding, you have a tendency to kind of forget, where do they go? Who do they talk to? I'm calling their friends. I'm driving by their places they go to. I'm going to sit outside their house. Is that a strange car in the driveway? You know, if you've ever stalked anybody, let me go see, can I go to their Google phone or the Gmail to see that where their phone is? <laughs> I've had some crazy exes. All right. Uh, <laughs> it's a whole other different story. But anyway. Back on track. Back on track here before we take this train wreck off the tracks again. So you have to realize, everybody, that sometimes you're just going to make an offer and go through it. If, don't flip out if people didn't respond to your email over the weekend because it was Easter weekend. All right. Send another email out this Monday. Pick up the phone and start talking to people. Know your deals, know your details, and then get the word out. And this is why it's important to be marketing ahead of time instead of waiting the last minute. I see that happens with a lot of people because we've seen some freakouts like that. They've been around for a while, but they've never marketed before. And they finally make an offer. Well, their marketing's behind the curve now mm-hmm. when they could have been simply posting Facebooks or sending emails. So very simple things to do to drive that you know, pump, to prime that pump. Greg, jump up here real fast. Okay. So, yeah, Greg. Yeah, 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 Greg. So, Greg, you, your dad is David Arcizo. Yeah. He's a mastermind member as well. David's, uh, you guys have owned rental properties and stuff like that. You helped your dad with a lot of stuff. But you've helped your dad out with the marketing, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you, you sent out an email on Monday or last Wednesday, week? Went last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. We're trying to do it every Wednesday, so hopefully we get one out tomorrow. Right. Too. But you had a, a Wednesday, and then you also had Easter this weekend. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you had a lot of people that you were in. How many people were at Easter with you? I think like 100. Oh, 100 family, people. 100 family members. So they got some cousins. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, but you guys, I talked to your dad yesterday, mm-hmm. and between the email you sent out and just networking and people getting out, how much in private capital do you think you guys have potentially raised? Like, uh, 
We got four hundred, like almost guaranteed. Four hundred, almost guaranteed. Pretty much, like he said, just find something and we'll fund it. And then um, we have a hundred thousand that's like in the works. Like, uh -huh. I promise. Your dad told me double that. Well, well, total. Like, yeah. With, even like last week and stuff. Sure. Like this week, yeah. <laughs> so about, but basically about a million bucks in private capital. Mm -hmm. People pledge, but you were doing simple things, right? Uh, Your dad's posting a couple deals here and there, a couple email posts, a couple Facebook posts. Right. LinkedIn, we've used started, LinkedIn. We started doing some LinkedIn stuff. Expand, exporting your database and sending it there. Yep. So you don't have to be a wizard at it, right? No, because I'm not good with the computer and either. See, so we're kind of... You're, you're, you're better than your dad, but your dad's better than he, he gives credit for. Yeah, he's real good with the Facebook and getting on there and post, just doing simple stuff. Just simple things, and then you made some offers, mm -hmm. and you actually have a thing. Like your dad was talking to me yesterday, hey, I got more product capital than I deal flow. Yeah, so that's I guess that's a good thing to have. It's a good thing <laughs> to have, as most people out there are struggling would want to know that. So simple things, just doing things... Regular things on a regular basis to make things happen, right? Mm -hmm. And now, how many emails have you sent to your database in total, do you know? We've sent, uh, I think, five total. Like five, five total? Yeah, only five this year. Five total, but yeah. you get the most amount of kicked in on the fifth email? Yeah, the, this last one we sent. Mm, like Eighty yeah. percent of sales happens after the fifth contact. Yeah. Wow. I think somebody said that a million times here before, right? Yep. It does work. It does work. And it's not me. I'm not helping Greg write the emails. Nicole's not doing it. Jen's not doing it. Greg's literally writing emails. Here's a picture that we made a bid on. Here's another one. Here's kind of the, the philosophy behind it, right? The, yeah, what we pay for it or what we're going to pay for it. The, this is a performing one. You know, this is what we're expecting the outcome to be. Could change, but more than likely. It'll stay where it's at. Yeah. And the people, if the deal doesn't go through, what are they going to say? Get me involved in the next one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get you involved in the next one. <laughs> So, simple things. You guys are Second Chance Lending Group. Second right? Chance Lending, yeah. Second Chance Lending Group out of Houston. Uh, when Greg's not here in the office being a slave driver and getting picked on by the ladies all the time. <laughs> don't pick on him. <laughs> it's tough love. Tough teasing love, right? Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's fun. Just, you know, got to make it interesting, right? Exactly. Just put the earplugs in and just keep listening. Have to go back to our office. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's what I'm trying to get at, everybody. It's just not me. This is why you see... People like Cody Cox having success raising capital, and he's mm -hmm. still working full time. You see Dan Zatoski doing a great job out there. Uh, you see Chase Thompson and Robert Woods doing stuff because with their NBA podcast, they on a regular basis they're constantly providing content. Okay, same here. Uh, Karen and Stacy Wall doing an amazing job. Uh, George Crocker, who's brand new, as he likes to say, the Presbyterian chief minister, yeah. sends an email out and he gets people that responds immediately to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Adam Adams doing stuff on a regular basis. Wayne Snell doing stuff on a regular basis. Jay Tenenbaum doing stuff on a regular basis. Kimber Banks Fawcett. I, the list could go on and on and on of doing simple things on a regular basis, but it's simple. You just have to do it regularly, and once you get in the habit of doing it once or twice, it becomes very, very simple just to hit rinse and repeat mm -hmm. and do it over and over again. So, what other things? Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Yay. Yay. Thank you Greg. So, what things are you guys struggling with to kiss? What are the things that are complicated to you right now that you would love a simpler method of doing things? Anybody um, have anything? Uh, Michelle asked, she said, it'd be nice to know the time frames as to what should happen after you purchase a note. Uh, when the uh, example, when the current servicer should send the goodbye letter, when and what communication should happen between the old and new servicer, etc. Okay, great question, Michelle. So, what should happen immediately once you close is most of the time, the sellers of the assets are going to ask you for a purchaser profile or purchaser overview. We call them a PO, right, Jen? Yes. That outlines where you want your stuff to go, what service you're going to use, what collateral company, your contact information, where everything needs to be sent, and who people need to reach out to. So then what happens next is the existing servicer should reach out to your servicer, and they start communicating to file transfers to handle the transfer over. Now, what usually happens is a goodbye letter needs to go out within 14 days of when the note was sold. So the previous seller slash servicer, servicer is going to be sending the goodbye letter out to the borrower and a hello letter from your servicer to the borrower saying, hello, thank you for not paying them, but you now need to pay us. Okay, Collateral, a soft copy should happen back and forth almost immediately. You should have gotten a soft collateral copy before you closed, you better have, okay? Now the hard collateral uh, will come usually within 30, sometimes 45 days after closing. There are some situations where if the asset was on consignment from a fund, it'll 
drag out, but as long as you've got a electronic copy, that does not stop you from having the servicer transfer take place. Now, one of the great things out there as well is if you've got a special servicer like Polaris or Laws of Daniel Singer, they can start reaching out almost immediately to the borrowers to make right party contact and start getting the dialogue going with the borrower. Where do they want to stay? Where do they want to go? Do I stay or do I go now? <laughs> if I don't pay, I will be in trouble. <laughs> Sometimes I'm going to have to pay double. Anyway, <sighs> yes, karaoke hour with Scott Carson is not fun. Um, too much coffee this morning. No Red Bulls today, though. That's good. I got some good sleep last night, so I'm recharged and rocking and rolling. Watch out, world. Anyway. So what, what is the time frame on that, though? Like, when should the first goodbye is what she's asking? Yeah. Goodbye letter should go out within the four, 14 days of you closing. Days. Okay. Okay? Um, a goodbye the hell letter should go out within the 30 days there, preferably at 14 days. That's why your servicers need to talk to coordinate, because they'll email back and forth sample letters. Hey, is this correct? Is this what it looks, should look like for the things to go out and make it happen? Okay, and most of the time, the servicers, the new servicers, will start right party contact in 30 days. This is why your special servicers can do it sooner than later because they can start that dialogue, and within 30 days, you may have an execution of exit strategy ready or an a idea of where the deal is going to go to. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Did I answer your question? Yeah, she was just asked, she was asking the time frame yeah. along with that information. So yeah. No problem. I love you, Michelle. Love you, Michelle. How's everything in Detroit this morning? That neck well, not Detroit, but Michigan. <laughs> Michigan. Anybody else? Good questions, comments? No. Nope. Hopefully that was helpful. Yeah, yeah that's what she said. Very helpful. Thanks. Yeah. Brian Patrick Murdoch said, keep it simple, Boda. That's right, Brian. Keep it simple. <laughs> keep it simple. This is not a difficult business. There's a lot of moving parts to it, but you have a lot of moving parts that you can keep it simple and just kind of keep it chain of command. It's like a link in the chain. Here happens here. Here happens here. I think what we're gonna do one day is we're probably gonna get Adam Adams on to do a pipe drive Ooh. thing one time because he did a, a great presentation at the Mastermind mm -hmm. and how he sets this stuff up. Actually, drum roll, he'll actually be speaking at Note Camp and going through that how to keep systems in place for your first you know tw dozens of assets. Yeah, so that'll be good. You can catch him on that as well. So, guys, like I said, we got a lot of great content speakers on Note Camp Live. Uh, we've got the schedule set in place. Do you have a sample thing we can put? Uh, I mean, you've got oh, the PDF. Yeah. Oh, not printed, but no, yeah. It's something we can print out one page to post in the base camp for so sure. people can start planning their, their Note Camp experience. Yeah, for sure. Now we'll have another virtual um, manual. You're working on the final touches of that today. Yep. But yeah, we're excited about that. If you're in uh, base camp, We'll be getting that probably later today, not tomorrow. We'll post a schedule for basically another speaker schedule going forward as well. So really excited about it, guys. I can't tell you how excited I am to have 700, an event 700 people deep. Any questions, comments, somebody? Cody Sperber yeah. said he just sent an email to you. Okay, awesome. Email email for for you. You. Oh, hey, awesome. Thank oh, you. Yeah, you. I'm sorry. Thank you, Cody. Appreciate that, Mr. Clever Investor. My buddy Cody, knocking it out for the park. Um, told him thank you. Yep. <laughs> yep, definitely. Thank you very much. Excited about that. Uh, guys, if you don't like notes and like uh, uh, real estate investing, Cody is the best guy to learn from when it comes to especially wholesale, uh, fix and flipping. You guys have been doing it a while. Guys are rock star. Uh, one day we all want to grow up to be Cody Sperbers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks, Cody. I appreciate it. So, otherwise, guys, uh, that's all I've got for you today. <clears throat> Go out and keep it simple this Tuesday. Join us at 7 o'clock tonight. We'll be breaking down those assets. And hopefully, uh, hey, guys, we are less than almost 49 hours from Note Camp 3.0. So get signed up. Um, it's, trust me, it's going to be one event you don't want to miss this year. So otherwise, have a great Tuesday. We'll see you guys tonight at 7 o'clock for joining us for the draft. And otherwise, we'll see you all at the top.